Okay, welcome back. Uh, last time we were talking about the directional derivative, and we wrote down this expression. The directional derivative of f in the direction of the unit vector u is equal to f sub x times a plus f sub y times b. Now, um, if you look at this structure, there's another way we could reorganize it. We could think of this f sub x times a plus f sub y times b very similar to a dot product. So we could rewrite this first expression as a dot product of two vectors, one of which is the vector with the partial derivatives in it, and the other is this unit vector. Um, so in other words, uh, if we write down this vector, we can get that this is equal to that vector dotted with our unit vector. And so this vector has a name. Uh, the vector of all the partial derivatives written in order of, uh, in, a, in a, cer a certain order that uh, normally xy or xyz, this is called the gradient vector. And we'll write this as uh, nabla f, so nabla f, uh, or the gradient of f, grad f. Okay, and so it's a vector made up of all the partial derivatives of f. So that's interesting because, right, this is the f sub x, that's a function of x and y. f sub y is a function of x and y. So this vector is a vector function of x and y. Uh, so that's something new, something we haven't seen before. And so if we want to write this directional derivative, we can do that by taking the gradient and dotting it with the unit vector u. And so, just like we can do this with two variables, we can do this with three variables or even more variables. So if you have a vector, you have a function f of x1, x2, dot, 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 up to xn, then the gradient of f is equal to f sub x1, comma, f sub x2, comma, dot, 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 comma, f sub xn. And then the directional derivative is what happens when you dot it with the direction, the unit direction in which you're going. So let's do an example. Let's find the directional derivative of a function. Here is x times sine of yz. When we're given a point and we're given a direction at that point. So let's talk about the steps to approach this problem. All right, so the first thing is, what are we looking for? We want to calculate duf, which is the gradient of f dotted with the unit vector. So in order to do this, what do we need to do? We need to find a unit vector in the direction of v. We need to find the gradient, plug in our point, 1, 3, 0, and take the dot product, and that's going to give us the uh, directional derivative. So what's our unit vector? <clears throat> we had v is equal to 1, 2, negative 1. So the unit vector is what happens when we take the v vector and divide by the length of the v vector. So the length of the v vector is square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared or square root of 6. And then, so that means that u is equal to 1 over square root of 6 times 1, 2, negative 1. Um, in this instance, it's, it's going to be easier if we don't uh, actually multiply that out, because it's a lot easier to multiply things out when you don't have square roots of things hanging around. Um, and so now we'll find the gradient. So the gradient is we need to calculate f sub x comma f sub y comma f sub z. And so 
this is a function, we need the derivative with respect to x. Well, in that case, the y and the z stay uh, constant. And so, and so what do we get? We get uh, x, derivative of x is 1, so we get sine of yz. Then we need to take the derivative with respect to y. Now x is a constant, and we're taking the sine of some constant times y. Well, x is a constant, we bring that out. The derivative of sine of something y is cosine of something y times the derivative of something y, which is just z. And then similarly, taking the derivative with respect to z gives us x times cosine of yz, but now we multiply by y because the derivative with respect to z of yz is just is y because z derivative of z is 1. Alright, so now we also need to plug in our point, 1, 3, 0. What do we get? We get sine of 0, comma 1 times cosine of 0 times 0, comma 1 times cosine of 0 times 3, which is the vector 0, 0, 3. So that's the gradient of f evaluated at this point, right? The gradient is a function of x, y, and z, but we have to plug in our point, and we take the dot product, so then we take the dot product of 1 over root 6, 1, 2, negative 1, dotted with 0, 0, 3, gives us negative 1 times 3 over root 6, right? The zeros, 1 times 0, plus 2 times 0, plus negative 1 times 3, gives us that. So what is this? So negative 3 over root 6. Root 6 is less than 3, so this is like 1, negative 1 point something. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's about negative 1.2. Close enough. So the question I would ask you is, what does this number mean? We went through, we did all this calculation. What does this number mean? Remember, this is a directional derivative, but now we're living in three space. Now we're in now we're in this room. You're at one point, which is the one three zero point, and you're walking in a certain direction. So you're walking in the positive x direction, the positive, the positive y direction, and then the negative z direction. So you're walking in this direction. And so what is this saying? This is saying that if we start at this point and we walk in this direction, then the rate of change of the function is about negative one to negative 1.2 per unit. So if this function represents temperature, it's saying that if we walk in this direction, the temperature is going to get colder. If we walk in the complete opposite direction, the temperature is going to get warmer. But in this direction, the, the rate of change of our function is a negative number, a negative 1.2, and so the temperature is going to get colder at that rate. All right. All right, let's stop here for now. Uh, see you shortly.